Well, hello, friends. Here we are, the last lecture. This is part five of our financial planning videos. This is it. Here we go. Let's finish off with a bang and not a whimper. Completing your financial plan. We've gone over a lot. We've learned how to systematically save, be better at saving money. We've looked at why we need to save, building an emergency fund. We've looked at budgeting or getting our cash flow plan. We've looked at how to pay back any college debt that we may incur, how to pay back other debts, build a credit score, start investing. Man, you got more than what you paid for by taking this course, my friends, much more. And again, if you want to learn this in more than uh, a few videos, take my personal finance class in the fall. It's blended. You don't have to come every day. And we can just really, really flesh it out on each of the subjects that we've gone over. So, I do want to make you aware of the personal finance websites that I have in Unit 4. There's a folder. Check those out. These are great. All right how to you know a mortgage calculator how much would your mortgage be gives you all sorts of ways how much you put down how long your mortgage is how expensive it is Susie Orman is uh, has some amazing help on personal finance US legal forms we'll talk about this today if you're 18 years or older you need a will and you need to get that today that website will let you download a Texas will if you're single married whatever uh, you need uh, for a very low price and you get it notarized you fill out the blanks notarize it and you got yourself a will again some of the mutual funds some research for um, insurance nerd wallet is great Google finance personal finance there's that acorns investing site that we talked about yesterday Experian credit reporting certainly worth that $20 a month uh, for your first few years to have your Always know what your credit score is and always protect your accounts. You can lock up your uh, account as well so no one can open up a credit card or any type of financing without your approval. Good stuff in there, my friends. Now, we want to talk about retirement. Wouldn't that be great to be retired? Yeah, maybe not. Who knows? We enjoy working, I hope. Uh, as you get your professional jobs, and for those of you who are, there, who are in them, you, as you're hired, are going to be offered you know a retirement plan hopefully there's two kinds we want to talk about and we want to prepare for this there's something called a defined contribution plan so for most of you you will have the option of funding a what is called a 401k oh, the K stands for Keo it's not like anybody cares but these are all arrangements with the Internal Revenue Service okay and if you're working in a nonprofit world, this is called a 403B. All right, 401k is the private sector, 403B is the non uh, private sector. They're cash accumulation funds. Hopefully, your employer will match something of your contribution. So, this is what you put into it. All right. Now, there is also something called a defined benefit plan. This is the traditional pension, which basically means if you work for a company for so many years, and generally it's called the rule of 80, 80, which means your age plus your numbers of years of service, and once it reaches the number or the calculation of 80, you are going to get some sort of a retirement for the rest of your life. Basically, it's about 50 to 70 percent averaging of your four highest average salaries, and you'll get that uh, for the entire uh, life of your retirement and, until you pass on. So let's, uh, let's flesh it out a little more. Okay, the defined contribution plan right here. 401k, 403b. They are accumulation funds. You must designate a portion of your income to go into retirement. All right? Now, what is it? Is that an investment? A 401k is, think of it as a box. Okay, it's a box that you surrounds your investment. They are not investments of themselves. Okay, so your company will basically say we are having our 401k administered maybe through Fidelity, maybe through Vanguard, but
but you, generally you get to choose inside that a mutual fund. Okay, so right here, uh, that's why we went over mutual funds or ETFs, exchange trade, traded funds. That's how you use that strategy inside. So there's the box. There's your investments that you put them in. Now, many times your company will say, uh, you can also elect to use all of our stock. We'll pay you, you know, you'll purchase our stock and we'll put it in the box for you. And then hopefully, hopefully on both accounts, the company adds uh, a percentage match to what you put in. Okay. Now I put right in here, do not do that. Do not use your company stock for your retirement. But you're telling me, man, you work for Apple, you work for Alphabet, which is Google's holding company, you work for Tesla, you work for a great FedEx, a, a big company. Okay, then put, put a portion of it in. Too many people use all of their company stock and put them in their 401k plans. Have you diversified to any extent? No, you haven't. So now your risk is everything. It's all with your company that you work for if you utilize the company stock for your retirement. So you're dependent upon your ordinary income, your regular income, and then all your future income. That's just too much risk, my friends. Now, companies love it when you do this. What? Yeah, they do. Because this allows them to have more capitalization in the marketplace because more of their stock is being purchased and it makes them look better. So we want to be diversified. If you work for the most amazing company in the world, does anyone remember Enron? Enron was that uh, energy company based out of Houston that was running the markets early in the early aughts in 2000, 2001. Well, they were doing a lot of illegal things. And so what had happened, let's just say it's September 30th and you are about to retire from Enron. You look at your 401k, it's worth $900,000 because all of the stock is Enron stock. Well, it all hit the fan later that day on September 30th. And you, you were going to retire October 1st. All right. October 1st of 2000. It was maybe 2001, 2002, somewhere in that, that era. Um, all of what Enron had done had been fraudulent. They had cooked their books. They had overstated everything, all their assets, all their income. They were nailed by the government. The next day, their stock, which was trading the previous day when you were going to think about retiring at 80 or $90 a share, it went down to like 50 cents a share. Your retirement fund equaled $5,000 and yet it was $900,000 the day before. Should I repeat anything that I just said? Do not use your company stock for all of your retirement. Maybe a little bit. Use the four types of mutual fund strategy. Okay, we have large cap or ETFs. Large cap, small cap, medium cap, uh, international funds, uh, bond funds. You have a lot of different funds you can use. And once you get substantial amounts of money, you can basically say, I want 25% of every dollar that I put into my 401k to go to a large cap fund, 25% of every dollar to a small cap, to an international, to an equity, make them different, okay, as, as, as your investing gets stronger in that 401k. Always, my friends, always contribute to the match of your company. Um, right now, there's about 50% of working professionals over 55 to 60 years old who do not have $20,000 saved for retirement because they never took advantage of this. And sometimes their companies, you know, we, 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 gotta, we gotta make our own bonuses, we have to make our own income, we have to do a lot of things on our own, my friends. So you definitely say the first day, yes, I want my 401k, I'm gonna, I'm going to invest up to the maximum, which is like between seven and 12% of my income. Always hit the match at your company. If you're fortunate to work for a company, they may match 50% of contributions to $10,000, which means you put in 10, they put in five, okay? Philosophically speaking, if you don't put in anything and you say, hey, I'm young and beautiful and I'm in my 20s, I'll worry about retirement later on. I'm gonna go out and buy a bass boat. I'm gonna go out and buy a different car. I'm gonna travel the world. I'm gonna do all these great things. What you're doing 
philosophically is you're giving back the company five thousand dollars because they would have given it to you always go to your match absolutely now a good question is can you outlive your money with these plans sure you can especially if you did not invest enough so at the end of your retirement we're flash we're, we're, we're fast forwarding 40 50 years you're now 73 years old sorry and you're looking at your 401k and hopefully there's over a million dollars in there all right and now you retire now if you went out and spent that million dollars pretty quickly I mean you'd have to partition that say I'll take 50,000 a year and that will last me 20 years if I take a hundred thousand a year that will last me maybe 10 now I still might be getting some interest but yes you could you could outlive money you could spend it all okay uh, that's just the way it goes. You have to be conservative. You got to start early. Those of you who can start early, do it and and invest the maximum you can. It will be worth it. Now the old benefit plan. This is a traditional pension. These are income streams based on your workload. Very very rare do we ever see these anymore because it costs organizations too much in governments. But if you if you can get in one and you're with an organization that has one, uh, basically. Let's say you've been making seventy-five thousand dollars. All right, and upon your retirement, we'll take eighty percent of that, which basically means this: you get sixty. That you don't have a giant savings account unless you saved on the side, and I'll show you how to do that. But the company will pay you a sixty thousand dollars a year for the rest of your life. You cannot outlive that plan because you'd be you know, you you you'd pass on. Also. And again, you might ask your parents some of this. Hey, mom and dad, what kind of pension, what kind of retirement plan do you have? These also give you the option of a sole survivor. So if you pass away, your spouse gets a percentage of that, like 80% of this amount. Now, you don't get the full amount because you, you, you do have to basically say, instead of getting $60,000, i will take $55,000, but my spouse then will take 80% of that. That's how my mom still lives. She lives on my father's retirement, who retired in 1989 from LTV. He passed away in 2006. And so she has, for the last 14 years, been getting his Social Security as well as his retirement uh, as a part of her income. So these are great. The only drawback here is you have to work for the company uh, your, pretty much your entire career. And we know a lot of, a lot of uh, employees just don't do that anymore. They, it's just hard to find an organization that, that can give them that type of... Uh, you know, career. So there we go. There we go. The defined contribution versus the defined benefit plan. I think that ought to give you enough information to go on. What about IRAs? Again, they're really individual retirement arrangements with the IRS. They designate it, and so they are IRA accounts. This is an extra vehicle that you can use, all right, to propel your retirement. Okay, there's a traditional and a Roth. Here's a traditional IRA. Um, this one you get tax deferred savings. All right, what does that mean? Okay, let's say this. I think you can you can do now up to seven thousand dollars a year, especially if you're a little bit older. You can. Let's just say five. All right. So you put in five thousand dollars to your traditional IRA. Is an IRA an investment? No. Again, it's a box. What you do is just like we looked at Fidelity and those funds the other day, just so we looked at Acorns and those funds, ETFs and mutual funds, you basically say, I'm going to invest in these mutual funds and this or this exchange traded fund, but I want to put in this box here, an IRA. That way I get tax deferred savings and I don't have to worry about that until I'm older. So this is a way to build retirement, but the investment is what you choose. All right, the mutual funds, or, the, or on the um, acorns, which you can start doing today, which is why I love that little acorns. It's so great. You can start putting in little bits of money every day and build your account. Up to 5000 a year is what you get. All right, so basically, as you do your taxes with the traditional IRA, you look at, you made, let's just say, all right, $70,000, and you're looking at your adjusted gross income. Well, that reduces your adjusted gross income by 5000 So now your adjusted gross income is if you're making seventy thousand, is now sixty five thousand. Okay, in any other retirement, same thing with the four hundred one k. It reduces your adjustable re income, so you get a little tax break. Nice, nice. It's not a credit; it's just a deduction. Now, 
Let's say we fast forward to your retirement and you've built up a million dollars because you listened to me and you started early and you, and you went crazy on it. When you start utilizing your IRA, it is now ordinary income. All right. So you have a million dollars. And basically, if you were to take all of it out in one f big hit, all right, you're going to do it. You would get about probably $600,000, you'd probably go into somewhere between a 30 and 40% tax bracket or 35% tax bracket. So you'd get seven, 650,000 and the IRS would take 350,000. It's taxable income. Okay. Now most people don't take the full amount out. They take out 50, 60,000 a year, like their income and the same thing. They'd be taxed on that. Now with a traditional IRA, pay attention because your parents may need this. You may withdraw, I believe it's 59 years old. The government, the government controls these, okay? So they, they dictate. If you try to use it, and a lot of people are trying to go into their IRAs and their 401ks right now because they need the money in this pandemic, then the IRS puts an immediate 10% penalty on whatever you withdraw plus your tax rate. So if your tax rate is 25%, they add a penalty that has to be taken out immediately before you can get the money. So we're looking for so many people right now between a 25 plus the 10, so a 35 to 45 percent tax. Uh, it, it's, it's a big tax. With a traditional IRA, you must withdraw at 70. All right. So if your parents or grandparents are in this age and they they they've got good money, they have an IRA. So you know what? I don't want to touch that right now. And they hit 70, they have to start taking out mandatory withdrawals. If not, they get penalized and taxed upon what they didn't take out. See, you're counting on that. But uh, these are the parameters. And so anything between here and here, it may be 59, you get to take it out without the penalty, use it, it is in income. Now, I think you need a traditional IRA because many of you are going to work for different companies. Okay, so Richard has a job with Microsoft. Great. Then he goes to Apple for five years. Then he hits with Elon Musk, finds out about him, and he loves him, and he works for Elon for another five, 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 five. And they may have 401ks. Well, what happens when you move to another job? You can take your 401k with you. Here's how to do it. You take your 401k, and you roll it right into a traditional IRA. That's what you want to do. Never take a check from them, because then it's can get taxed at those rates of 10% plus your tax rate. You say, I want you to transfer this directly into my traditional, therefore it bypasses any taxes until you use it later on. And you get to do what? You get to use your mutual fund strategy and work with your traditional IRA. Don't leave your 401k with a company that you left that you left because they'd be happy to take it. It's part of their they get to they get to invest it and they get to use some of the proceeds of that uh, without you knowing it. So always roll it over, and you must roll this one into a traditional IRA. So yes, we do need one of these. All right? Now this is the 1,000-pound dog. If we were living in Arkansas, that's what we'd say, because this is big. It works very much like the traditional IRA, okay? Um, you do have some income limits, okay? If you're making over, I believe, $100,000 like Richard is, is a single person, then you have to only, you can only invest in the traditional IRA. If you are under 100,000 for single and under 190,000 for a joint married, you can use the Roth. The Roth does not give you the tax deferral. So if you invest $5,000 in the Roth this year or last year, you don't get to take that off your adjusted gross income. Big deal. It is completely tax free for life repeat that. It is tax-free for life. A lot of, of our representatives in Congress do not like the Roth IRA because they want to tax you. They want to get all of the money they possibly can for, for you. And they've been trying to delete this for the past 20 years. It's still in effect. So hit it. This is what you want to open up, my friends. So you start investing now with the Acorns, with the uh, um, Fidelity. Okay. And when you retire, let's fast forward to your 70 years old, all right, because, you know, or even your 60, and you have 500000 you have a million dollars in there, and you want to take it all out, you take out the million. There is no taxation on that, ever, until the government changes, and they haven't. Sweet? Very sweet. 
Okay, there's no maximum age for withdrawals. I say that. I know you're, we're young. We don't care right now. Well, it's 70. I'm not even 70, so why should I care about having to withdraw from an IRA? My uncle didn't do that. And when he turned 70, 71, he got hit up with a bill from the IRS, and, and he did very well in life, and said, you were supposed to take out this much, and so we're doing a 50 per, you should have taken out at least $10,000 from your traditional IRA. You didn't. We're doing a 50% tax on that. So they taxed him $5,000 for not taking out his money. In the Roth, there are no maximum age for, for withdrawals, and you can gift this to a family relative uh, if you pass on. So which one do we want? We need the traditional for this reason, because you are probably going to have multiple jobs in your life, and you want to be able to roll over a 401k to a traditional IRA. Since they are both tax-deferred boxes, vehicles, that's the only way this one gets into this one. You cannot, you cannot transfer a 401k traditional into a traditional IRA. Now, there may be a 401k Roth. Uh, those are investments out there, and if your organization does that, get it. Because, again, you don't get a tax deduction, but that is tax-free for life. And always, we're using the mutual fund strategies for our investments. All right, I've given you enough information to be dangerous. Uh, you're going to want to research a little bit more of this, but when, when in doubt, you're young, you're not making over 100 grand, do the Roth. And for those of you who can start that today, it's fantastic. The one stipulation that I did not say about your IRAs, you must have working income. You must have a W-2, okay, from, from the government. So if I was going to invest $5,000 and I am a 19-year-old college student, I can do it. I at least have to have $5,000 worth of income on my previous taxes, okay? So for 2019, I want to invest now. I have to at least have uh, $5,000 worth of uh, wages, not investment income, and not gifts, it has to be actual wages. That's that's just the rules. So, you got a job, mom and dad want to give you a gift, and you've got uh, $5,000 of income, and they say, hey, here's, here's, here's $1,500, say, mom and dad, let's make a Roth IRA, and let's start using some of the strategies that you learned in this wonderful course. Insurance. The purpose of having insurance is to limit your exposure to risk. That's it. Now, can we ever be risk-free? Well, good luck on that one. No way. God, <laughs> we're in today. So yes, we need insurance. Uh, it, it's a very powerful plan, a part of our financial plan. Yeah, no one can have enough money. They ever need. The very wealthiest people have tons of insurance because it's cheaper for them to buy and it protects all of their assets. Now, just remember, insurance people, salespeople know this, and they are typically going to sell you more insurance than you could ever use. So we have to find the right amount of insurance that limits your risk to the unknown, but doesn't just make you broke on premiums. All right. Oh, there it is. There it is. The emergency fund. Remember that fully funded emergency fund that we were supposed to have on step three? This is the insurance against your entire financial plan. All right. When you have that fully funded, let's say you got 10 to 20 grand in your bank. That's for emergencies, not for just purchasing. All of a sudden, you can start raising those deductibles on your insurance. Absolutely. And that's going to save you money. If we don't have the emergency fund, we start robbing investments, we borrow, we do different things to get us out of that emergency. So that is why it is so important to have. It is the insurance on your financial plan. Health insurance. Man, do we need health insurance. Uh, I know there's a lot of different things in the marketplace right now, and politically, what happened to Obamacare, which I never really fully understood, but it sounded like a plan to, to insure people, which, which didn't seem like the worst thing in the world. But I did have a student years ago, 19-year-old, went out to eat with friends, felt really sick. They went to Chile, she said. Uh, got food poisoning at 2 a.m., went to the ER. Uh, my doctor has said, and, and, unless you're in terrible, terrible, bleeding everywhere, gunshot wounds, whatever, if you can stay out of the ER, go to one of the, you know, urgent care centers. Well, they may not have been around seven years ago as much as they are today. She went to the ER. They pumped her stomach out. She got a $14,000 bill a, a month later, and she just went complete anxiety. She threw it away. Uh, it led her into her credit score being wiped out. Uh, someone told her to basically file for bankruptcy 
she was driving a six-year-old car that was a piece of junk, and she was paying six forty-five a month on it. Wow, twenty-five percent of all bankruptcies are filed by those under twenty-seven years old. Test question right there. That's crazy. A quarter of every bankruptcy, and and there's millions filed a year, are by under twenty. You can't file it under eighteen. You're not an adult. So between eighteen and twenty-six years old, short, and a lot of it is health problems. You know, because of health bills. What I had to do when I graduated college and did not have a job, uh, and I went off my father's medical insurance because it was really strict back then. I think most of it can go till 25 years old. See what short-term major medical insurance will do for you. That's something that, that, you, that you'd want to buy right here. It basically, it just insures you against catastrophic, like a car wreck, uh, any, nothing pre-existing. Now again, today, everything has changed but some you want you need insurance somehow my friends you really do you don't want to get in this problem and that's probably what it is health and, and too much credit card debt and we're filing bankruptcies so yes health insurance get it somehow again and this was it cost maybe five hundred dollars a year no checkups but it did guard will guard you against um, major catastrophes in life and all you gotta do is go find a uh, storefront insurance person Basically, they can sell this premium to you, and it may be it may be now five to six, seven hundred dollars. But again, it, it it gets you up to like a million dollar policy because if you're going to Uptown Dallas once all this is over, and uh, somebody t bones you, okay, and because your friend was driving and you got your broken leg and had no insurance, that broken leg will probably cost you two hundred thousand if it had to have surgery, two hundred thousand dollars because you have nobody negotiating for you as an insurance company does for you that that you got it. So very important. Disability? Well, as you're working, I think you want this. It is long-term disability is six months and beyond. This will cover 60%. This is insurance on your income as you work. It is the most overlooked insurance to purchase. And if your organization offers you this as you, as you are signing your contract to work, uh, get it. it because it's a very small cost, very small cost indeed. All right. And it covers about 60% of your income for the duration of the disability. And that's until a doctor says you're able to work. So if you're in your 30s, uh, you've got a great job. Let's just make it easy. You make $100,000. Fantastic. And you get in some sort of a very bad accident that you cannot work anymore. This will basically pay $60,000 a year for you and, until your retirement age. And then you would go on Social Security. All right. And, be and, and if you didn't have any type of insurance, then you'd just be on Social Security. And I can tell you that check is about 900 bucks a month. And uh, there's no way you can survive on $900 a month. So uh, under the age of 60, you have an 80% chance of being disabled versus death. So this is something you need. And if you are self-employed, uh, it, it is more expensive. But boy, you, it is definitely worth it, my friends. Because uh, if you can't run your own business and you have a very hard time, nobody is going to want to hire me if I'm disabled because of an accident and I have my own business. It's going to be very difficult to. So this insurance, um, and, and again, for your parents as well, it is extraordinarily important. And it will protect your income. Life insurance. Hey, I don't want to get dark on you. But uh, the average cost of a funeral is ten grand, and uh, you know you can get one cheaper. You can be cremated. All right, that's about three to five. There are some uh, funeral homes that uh, I, I think Forest Ridge Funeral Home. Uh, there's one off Brentwood Stair that uh, I've, we've had to use for family members of my wife's family. I think it's called Moore. It's off Brentwood Stair. That's all I know. Uh, I think uh, Brentwood Stair Funeral Home or Mr. Morse Funeral Home did a, did a great job for three or five thousand dollars. Hey, when someone you know passes away, this is a tough nut to crack right there. What do you want? Life insurance right now. You want twenty year level term, somewhere between eight and ten times your income. So if you have a forty thousand dollar income, four hundred thousand dollars worth of insurance that'll pay your bills off, probably your mortgage. Or, or, or it leaves your family members with income that they can then reinvest. There's something called universal and whole life insurance. People love to sell this to you. It's very expensive and it makes them an excellent rate of return. This is a one-time deal for them. And this is what you want to know. And I have it, Xander Insurance, on that website. Go buy it through there. This is supposed to build you up a cash value. And it will over time. And uh, let's say the whole life insurance that you purchase... You have, a, say, a $100,000 policy, and you built up $15,000 worth of cash value. All right? I thought that for myself. 
And uh, I asked my insurance agent, well, I just called the company. And I had, a, I had a, somewhere around that amount, maybe about 10000 And I said, if I died, my wife's my beneficiary, how much money will she get? Just just asking you. And they said she would get $100,000, $100,000. I go, what happens to that $10,000 worth of cash reserves that I have? Oh, that goes back to us, the insurance company. And I said, what? Tell me how that works. Well, it's for our expenses. And I told them, no, no, no. I've, I've paid you 20 years of premiums. That's not your expenses. They get to keep the cash if you pass away. It's a weird deal, my friends. But what I did ask was this. If I canceled my policy today, who gets that $10,000? Well, then you get your $10,000 back. I canceled it immediately. Well, here's what I did. I got my term insurance built up. And then I then I canceled out uh, and got my ten thousand dollars and put that in my emergency fund years and years and years ago. So be careful of whole life universal. It makes them a lot of money. Really doesn't make you any investments at all. And this is so much more inexpensive. Many of you right now, under thirty, under forty, could get five hundred thousand dollars worth of insurance for less than twenty dollars a month. Bank on that, my friends. And then again, you know, we're thinking, well, what about later in life? Okay, well, in your fifties or sixties. You may not need as much insurance because you may have good retirement accounts and some investing accounts to where you just need enough to bury it, you know. And so maybe a, a, a small $50,000 policy, something like that. Be careful on this. You need it. Just don't overpay. There's my car. Automobile. Yeah, most of us are into finance. It, usually when you finance a brand new car or, or a pretty good used car that's not that old, you can get gap insurance. So you got to have auto insurance, all right? Make sure you're, you're, you're not overpaying for that. But the gap insurance does this for you. If you borrow a car, all right, you got to brand borrow money on it. You got a brand new car, you bought a $25,000, a Honda Civic, you know, value package. And you drive it for a year. And unfortunately, you get totaled, all right, but you come out fine. The insurance company says to you, uh, you know what we're going to do, Elise? We are going to pay you seventeen five for your car, and you said, "Wait, wait, 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 wait a second. I uh, let's say she, you pay a little bit more off. I owe twenty three on this. I bought twenty five. I owe twenty three. Yeah, but we're giving you market value, and since it's two years old, this is the market value. We'll be nice and give you eighteen five. Well, what about that five thousand dollars? That's the gap. The gap insurance would basically pay for that, and it, it goes down over time." But ask about it when you do finance a car because you don't want to be left with that $5,000 worth of gap. Now, what the car company will say is, don't worry, we'll roll over your old loan and we'll get you a new loan. All of a sudden, you're just rolling in more debt into loans. So gap insurance, unless one way to do that is to pay for that car in cash and you'll be all right. Make sure you don't have overpaying on your car insurance, too. You know, small deductibles like fifty dollar deductibles on collision and comprehensive, and PIP. PIP is personal injury protection. That's, that's a nice one to have. Uh, but just be 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 careful because once an agent makes that policy, they never want to change it unless you ask them. Please, hey, the car's ten years old now, or five, or seven. Uh, let's up. Let's just have just liability only, and and I've got enough money in my emergency fund. I can write the deductibles. I once had an old friend, Erlene. She uh, didn't live too far away. She was a person I knew from a church I used to go to. and uh, She was so proud. Her uh, minivan uh, got hit by a shopping cart at a place in Fort Worth. And uh, she went up there and said, you know, you, uh, uh, this shopping cart hit me and busted my door. I mean, it put a big dent in the door. It didn't make it undrivable. And they said, well, you know, we don't have any liability on that. So she called her insurance company and they paid for it and she was so proud I didn't pay a dime for having my car fixed now this was a six-year-old minivan and she was paying twenty eight hundred dollars a year for full coverage okay six years old she paid eighteen thousand dollars in cash I mean she had eighteen thousand dollars and she paid for her car in cash too by the way uh, for her insurance and yeah for the three hundred dollars worth of damage, she didn't pay a dime. I said, "Well, Orlean, you paid eighteen thousand dollars for that. That's what you pay." You know. Once I found out what she was doing, I said, "Let's call your company up and take off everything except liability, because you could pay for another minivan in cash." She had so much money uh, left over. She's a widower, 
and of that good decade that had money. And so, yeah, yeah, that's way overpaying right there. Pay for the insurance that you need and remember your emergency funds. You can basically pay for that damage for your own car or buy yourself another one, uh, you know, uh, indeed. And, and that's really going to save those under 25 years old. That's why you're paying such terrible amounts for your car insurance because if you have collision and comprehensive on that, uh, it's very expensive. So the rule of thumb, especially under 21, you know, in your young 20s, buy a cash car, all right? It will save you so much money. And after 25, you should get a better rate, and then you go in for those newer cars. Just a little financial sense there, my friends. Long-term care, all right? This is against your assets. Uh, insurance it usually covers up to three years in a nursing or assisted living. Now, I'm going through that right now with my mother. Been going through it. Um, they didn't want to pay for it because it was expensive. Well, I can tell you right now. Uh, it is $70,000 in a private pay nursing home sharing a room. So for your parents or grandparents, that's all you get. You don't get therapy. You don't get anything else. Uh, we will have expended everything that my father worked for. We did probably sell the house. Everything just to keep her in assisted living for the next few years. So that could be very important. About 67 years of old age, you want to get your parents or grandparents are thinking, hey, what are the deductibles? Because in three years, you could pay easily $250,000 versus you may pay $20,000 within some sort of uh, insurance. So think about that. There's me. All right. I'm older uh, in life now. I fast forward probably 50 years, you know, I'm so young. Just push me in. Just push me in and, and, and hold my uh, head under the water because I do not want to go through that, my friends. It's not much of a great life there. All right, trying to make light of a tough situation, but, you know, have that talk with your parents. Have that talk with your grandparents because it can literally eat up every single thing that they've ever worked for. And I'm living proof of that. Other insurances to avoid, you know, credit card protection, accidental death. Because if you die of natural causes, an accidental death don't pay. Cash value life, we talked about that whole life. Mortgage protection insurance, duplicate health insurance. All of these sound really good, but if you have that 20-year level term, these just get very expensive for what you're paying for. You could pay an extra $10 a month. All of a sudden, this could be an extra $50, $60 a month for all of these with a $20 a month for $500,000 for the protection on term life. You'd have that done. So just be very careful. Also, duplicate health insurance. If you've ever had that, maybe your spouse, partner, you're together and you, in, you insure each other. And you be careful because then if you get sick, you get in the hospital, neither insurance company wants to pay. They're going to say, hey, man, that, that, that's the other person. No, that's the other companies. And guess who has to pay? You got it. You got it. The, the insurance, the hospitals and the doctors say, well, we're, we're going to leave it to you because you signed the agreement. And then you figure it out with your insurances. So be very careful on that. Sometimes, if you're lucky, you can get your spouse, partner's insurance to pay basically for the deductibles. Uh, but that needs to be stated out because I have seen it happen and it is not very pretty. Anyone over 18 years old? Most of you are. There's a couple of you in the class that are not. That's all right. You need a will. A traditional will. Friends, when you pass on, whatever age that is, whatever time frame that is, there's only one thing that can speak for you when you are dead, and that is your traditional will. 70% of Americans die without a will. If you die with an incomplete will that wasn't signed or notarized correctly, or without a will, you die in the state of Texas intestate, which means without a will. <clears throat> the state of Texas now becomes your executor, and they decide who gets what. And they really don't want to spend a lot of time on this. And so what they do is they find the next living kin, the closest living family member, and they say, you are now, you inherit everything. Uh, we just decided that. And you may not want that to happen. I had a good friend named Wade. Okay, he died, oh gosh, 15 years ago. He was a guy, single guy who worked very hard at Scottish Rite Hospital. Uh, never, he saved all of his money. Uh, went to church. I know he wanted to, to, for different things to happen. And unfortunately, he didn't take care of his business. Uh, we're very, very surprised at that. And uh, 
most all of his um, planning we couldn't find. When he passed on, his brother came down. He and his brother talked one time a year. That was it. They said hello to each other. State of Texas comes in. We could not find the will. I'm not so sure that his brother uh, had something to do with that. But uh, the state of Texas gave it all to his brother. And we're talking about $2 million worth of assets that nobody else got anything of. Not his favorite charities. He would have definitely given back to Scottish Rite Hospital uh, or to the church he went to. And uh, I helped with, you know, some of the final arrangements. And his brother wasn't a bad guy by any means, but they just didn't like each other. And uh, brother had called me up several weeks later, just said, want to thank me for helping him out. And uh, said, you know what I'm doing? I'm retiring. And I go, I bet you are. <laughs> because he retired from his job. He got everything from his brother's, my colleague's husband's brother uh, years ago. Basically married in to... Uh, uh, his bride and his bride had the children from other marriages and one other marriage and but she did not change any of the beneficiaries of life insurance they got into a horrific car accident the whole family did traveling to Denver for a ski trip and they literally ran off the road they all fell asleep driving and uh, the children survived because they were in the seat belts she got thrown out of the car died he got thrown out of the car and uh, is disabled for the rest of his life and uh, her life insurance was in her ex-husband's name for like a hundred thousand dollars and he kept every bit of it and didn't give any to the children and they were his children uh, it, it was just terrible terrible uh, uh, events that happened you got to have this my friends on that website or legalforms.com you get yourself a will tonight all right download it fill it out have someone witness it better to get it notarized for five dollars to go to a notary republic and you're set all right you are set at least whatever it is you may have a video collection your computer collection your hot wheels collection needs to go to somebody don't let the state determine who it goes to if you love somebody all right i know we do uh again this is just taking care of business getting our financial plan a list with phone numbers and account if i die uh, I, don't cry all right that's what i say don't cry yet okay because this is going to this because you'll really cry over this here's everything your life insurance the policy there the copy of it ira information make sure that your iras that you're going to start investing in your retirement has beneficiaries okay the phone numbers Retirement information, credit cards, any funeral arrangements. I would like this to be cremated. All right, nobody was going to show up to my funeral anyway, so just cremate me, save some money, or uh, you can stack. You can stack on some uh, on cemeteries, which means you can you don't have to buy two plots. You can stack uh, one on another. So uh, put all that in. Put it all in this. There we go. That's at Walmart. It's a nice little fireproof safety. Uh, briefcase which means either water or fire you put everything in here all right the will the love you list your policies birth certificates marriage license if the event your home caught on fire or apartment it's not going to burn all down and and this would withstand it this was everything if you had to have a go list you have to have that go bag that's part of it this is all your legal information Whew. wow wouldn't that be easy my friends definitely make sure you graduate all right your average salary increases $15,000 a year, my friends. Just don't load up with the college debt. I think we have a plan for that, all right? We know that uh, right now we're seeing a lot of unemployment rates because of the pandemic, but for those with a college degree, that gives you one extra step to keep that job they, because companies want to keep talent. It's an ongoing personal financial crisis in America. 70% of Americans, unfortunately, are imploding right now. Our government's not helping, and so we cannot count on them to help us. This is behavior, my friends. We focus on telling our money what to do. That's the intellectual side, and we behave that way. We live within our means. We do our best to reduce and eliminate that debt. And as we have seen, we save aggressively for the unknown and invest systematically for a long period of time. We do those separate things right there. We will have financial peace what if you're debt-free what if you had 20 grand in the bank for unexpected expenses your retirements were fully funded you're starting to build your wealth 
doesn't happen today, doesn't happen overnight, but all of a sudden you wake up 10, 20 years from now and these, all of this is in place. Financial freedom. Absolutely. Life gets, seems so much better. During World War II, Winston Churchill got up in front of the United States Congress. He did it at graduations and just said, never, never, never give up. Things are going to kick us in the teeth. We may be getting kicked in the teeth right now. They're going to hit us down. We get right back up and we don't give up. We can make it. That's it. We're finished. I hope that you enjoyed your business principles course. I do hope you can take at least one idea from this class and apply it to your daily life. From your business model, from the economic environment, to managing people, to managing your own personal finances. This class was all about you. If you enjoyed it, there are web advisor uh, evaluations and ratemyprofessor.com. Think of that. If you did not enjoy it, don't even don't even visit those sites. All right. Other courses I teach, my friends, in the fall, I we're going to have a fall semester one way or another. Okay, we will. I teach principles of marketing. Uh, great class, you'll love it. Monday, Wednesdays, eleven to twelve twenty p.m. Okay, it's going to be blended. All right. Tuesday, Thursday, six thirty to seven fifty p.m. Blended. All my courses will be blended now. All right. That way, you don't have to be up here two days a week. Uh, and if we have to go online, well, you know how easy that's going to be because I provide the videos and all the assignments. This is my course. I'm excited because I always teach it online, but now I'm going to teach it in the classroom, Monday, Wednesdays, 930 to 1050, and that will be blended. So this was a kind of a steroid approach to do this, and we'll just get more in depth. We'll actually make out our budgets. We'll, we'll, we'll go through the debt uh, snowball together. We'll look a little more in investments and finish our plan. So it'll just be a, an expanded version and a little more in depth than what we just went under. An Eastern monarch once charged his wisest men to invent a sentence to be ever in view. It shall be true and appropriate for all times and situations. They came back several times. Finally, they presented him with these words, and this too shall pass away. My father's favorite quote, Abraham Lincoln's favorite quote. We're going to get through this pandemic, my friends. Things will get back to a normalcy uh, in the coming months. Just remember that throughout your life, whatever problems occur, they will pass away. All the best.